ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Marco's Pizza Card Reveal for Emerge 47 Ironclad taking place Saturday, August 3rd at Parkside Elementary in Columbus, Indiana. My name is Casey Johnson, alongside me, A.W. Lurch, and the commissioner of Emerge Chris Lowe, and we know there have got to be some of you who are new to this entire process since Chris. We just had one of the biggest events in Emerge history. One of the best events in Emerge history. <laughs> Fireworks and Fisticuffs 2. We are going to thank you guys for that here in a second. Go in depth a little bit more, but first, we want to welcome all of you who are new and just let you know. This is a card reveal. We are going to reveal every match that is going to happen at Emerge 47 Ironclad one by one. We're going to break it down, possibly even make a few predictions, and we're going to get into a lot of trouble along the way. It's always a fun time, and thank you guys for joining us. But guys, fireworks and fisticuffs too. Wow. What a day that was, gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> a little rainy. <laughs> a little rainy, yeah. We were using our bodies as umbrellas to save equipment. But, uh, the, you know, Chris, the thing that continually amazes me about our fans and about our people, they sat in their cars in the parking lot for an hour and a half while it stormed mm -hmm. and just waited for the rain to end. Just like we did. Yeah. Uh, seriously, this is... I mean, they left their chairs in the front row to save that spot yeah, right. in the storm. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, we talk all the time about how you guys are the best fans in wrestling and you guys are what makes it all possible. This is the kind of stuff that you can't fake. This is the kind of passion that you can't manufacture. This is the kind of stuff that only comes from legitimately being the best fans in wrestling. And honestly, we just can't get enough of your guys' support. Absolutely. I we started the day with a few hundred fans at the beginning. The storm hit, and I bet we had 600, 650. I mean, it, it was up there. And for lightning storm yeah. about an hour before that lurch, that's not too darn bad. Right, right, yeah. And, and they stuck around for those fireworks at the end. I mean, what a night. What a night indeed. A night wherein there were kicks to referees. There were changes made. There were there was almost a new emerged champion. Almost. And there was a certain man by the name of Ricky Ruckus who now has a major, major grievance to file. Uh, of course, we're talking about the Red, White, and Bruise Battle Royale. Ricky Ruckus, Jordan Cage are your final two, but... To really tell this story, we need to start with the final four, right? right. You've got Braden Lee, you've got Justin Kyle, you've got Ricky, and you've got Jordan. And Braden Lee and Justin Kyle kind of took each other over, and then they kept fighting. And when they kept fighting, the refs tried to separate them. When the refs tried to separate them, Ricky throws Jordan Cage over the top. Ricky's your winner. Except no. Unfortunately, the referee's decision has to stand, and none of the referees saw Jordan go over the top rope. So Jordan gets back in, he throws Ricky over the top rope, and now Jordan Cage is your number one contender for the Emerge Heavyweight. Championship. I mean, I, did, I didn't see Jordan Cage go over the top rope. I don't know. It literally just showed. No. I... There's video, like, right over there. Oh. And it... Well, either way, I mean, Kamish, Kamish said it himself. You Talk to him. The referee's decision stands. I mean, I, I specifically asked both officials if they saw anything, and uh, we've got to go with what they see. Yeah, and both officials who were assigned to that side, but there were, what, four, five of them out there? And, and, and not a one of them saw it, unfortunately. But this has led to a completely separate issue which is uh when ricky did get thrown out over the top rope he hit the concrete hard and he hit the concrete hard and he's got a couple of cracked ribs and anybody who knows anything about cracked ribs you know every breath hurts there's no way that you're wrestling 
there's no way you can hardly walk down the street without stopping and having to take a couple of deep breaths, which hurt even more so. Um, you know, we would love to give Ricky his d- just desserts and, you know, let him and Picture Perfect Jordan Cage battle it out. And who's the real number one contender? It, it would all be... Uh, a, a very nice promotion. It would all be very nice marketing, but Ricky's hurt. Yeah, Ricky, uh, he's going to be out for a little while at least. So that officially sets your main event. However, we've got seven more matches to get to before we get to the main event, and every single one of them is mind-blowing to me. I can't believe that we actually put this card together, and I really am sorry that I say that every month. I try not to say it every month, but they're always so good, and they start off with Saints Row. Saints Row, of course, your Emerge talk show, it happens in the ring. Jason Saint always has some of the most tedious, but some of the most interesting questions to ask, and this time... He's going to be interviewing Emerge newcomer Justin Kyle and Chris. How impressive has Justin Kyle been? I mean, witness the power, am I right? He's uh, just amazing. A uh, very a great talent. Glad to have him here, and I'm excited to see what uh, he's got to say. And, Lurch, I know you've been around this business a long, long time. Have you ever seen anybody quite like Justin Kyle? I mean, the man is is impressive. He is a machine. I mean, who was it that he picked up over his head and just threw out of the ring there? I think that was Anthony Lee. Anthony, I mean, he picked up Anthony Lee. He's a big boy. Over his head. Throw them. I mean, I mean. Not to use hyperbole, but you you know you've got to speak in hyperbole to describe somebody like Justin Kyle. I've I've been saying Justin Kyle is kind of like if Goldberg had a forty inch vertical. That's a good way. Like he's got the power. He just runs through people. People don't last too long in the ring with him. He lawn darted Braden Lee into bleachers in the in the midst of a throng of fans at Parkside Elementary. Yet he can fly. He flies halfway across the ring when he's doing that splash in the corner, and. The man is is dangerous. The man is somebody who you want to latch your wagon to, as it were, now. And you've got to figure that Emerge Championship gold is going to be on his mind sooner rather than later. But, of course, I don't want to make any assumptions. I'll leave Jason Saint uh, to ask the questions because I know he will right when he gets done with his sucker. That being said... Two more big boys, two more athletic big boys face each other in our first official match for Emerge 47 Ironclad. A rematch from the first round of the Gold Rush Tournament all the way back in December. What's match number one, Kamish? Zodiac versus Yukon Mike. And oh my goodness. Folks, if you don't know what these two can do, if you haven't seen this match the dvd is available right now right now order it because these two who are both probably six seven an easy 320 had a lucha match (laughs) right in the middle of a tournament everybody thought it was going to be a slug fest but these two are (laughs) bouncing off hurricane ranas and, I, you know, I've said for so long, I, I said it in our predictions video when we were writing down our little predictions, if UConn Mike had beaten Zodiac, I think he wins that tournament. But instead, it's Zodiac that goes to the finals against Chris Caliber, and UConn Mike has got to be wanting his shot at redemption here. Well, no doubt about it, but going up against Zodiac, UConn Mike is a big, giant lumberjack, but Zodiac is a monster, the hybrid monster. I mean, and we've seen what he's capable of. Love. I mean, I got Zodiac again in this in this matchup. But weirdly, the last few months, Chris, Zodiac has not been focusing on Zodiac. Zodiac has been more focused on his pairing with Mikey. Unfortunately, Mikey 
is out with an injury. Uh, I mean, he, he posted it publicly. Everybody knows his MCL is apparently just hanging on by a thread. So he's going to have to rehab it, which makes Zodiac a singles competitor again. But Zodiac basically, except for a, a couple months there, your longest reigning emerged champion. Possibly the most dominant emerged champion we've ever had. Yeah, I mean, it took... Chris Caliber and a casket right. to end that title reign. And Zodiac is one of the most dangerous men in the world, period. And when you consider the fact he may not be uh, uh, mentally there with uh, Mikey being on the shelf, you've got to wonder how that's going to affect uh, the matchup. Indeed, you do. But that's the thing. You talk about him not being mentally there. Lurch, Zodiac is a hard guy to rattle. <laughs> And he's a psychological mastermind. He's mm -hmm. totally there. So, Zodiac, Yukon Mike, this is just match number one, people. This, this is going to get good, I promise you. Match number two, triple threat match, a number one contenders match for the Outbreak Championship. That's right. Too Cool, TJ Kemp faces Jake Carter versus Flash Thompson. Flash Thompson, El Leon Blanco. Flash Thompson, who is a name some of you might yes. not recognize. Yeah, I've been looking forward to this debut of Flash Thompson for so long. I mean, I've heard, you know, so many good attitude changes, so many good things. See, here's the thing. It's not a debut per se. I, I'm, I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret here. Since the last time that he was in Emerge... Kyle Maverick has kind of, he's become very full of himself, he's radically shifted lifestyles, and he now wants to be referred to as El Leon Blanco, which translates to the White Lion, Flash Thompson. That, that is the way that we are supposed to refer to him from now on. It's not a debut. It's I knew a, that. It's a return. Yes, yes, and I'm excited. I mean, Flash Thompson, I mean, yes, I knew that. <laughs> I'm glad that you know that. But he says Kyle Maverick was a loser. Flash Thompson is a winner. He's a winner, that's right. And he is ready to win that number one contendership for the Outbreak Championship. But he's going to have to go through two Emerge Mainstays to do so, he's got T.J. Kemp, first of all, which, you know, T.J. Kemp enters Emerge in the midst of this massive deal with, with Ricky Ruckus and Donnie Idol, and was he the guy who attacked Donnie? No, he was But ever since then, T.J. Kemp has been really trying to find his place. And he had a major issue with Lennox Norris, ended up getting that two out of three falls victory at Emergence Day, but... He's really trying to start that upward trend, and how better to do it than beating a man who, albeit under a different name, is a former Outbreak champion in Flash Thompson. That being said, when it comes to the word Outbreak, switch that around. What do you get? Breakout. Who is more of a breakout star in the Midwest right now than Jake Carter? Flash Thompson. I mean, that's one way of looking at it for sure, but Jake Carter is the type of guy who he's getting all of the opportunities. He's been incredibly impressive. He eliminated former Outbreak champion Brett Havoc. In the red, white, and bruise battle royale. I, I, I assume that had something to do with uh, his placement in this number one contenders match. But uh, I, I know you'll, you'll never reveal right. <laughs> your secrets. But any one of these guys could take it at any time. You've got TJ Kemp, who is a storied veteran. You've got Jake Carter, who has a motor that never stops and can take one heck of a beating, and then you've got Flash Thompson, who is all about, no pun intended, but Flash. And by that I mean he is both about being flashy and all about himself at, at the same time. Well, as real as it gets, too cool, and Eleon Blanco, 
This should be one heck of a match. And the winner faces the winner of our Outbreak title match. A little bit later on, we're going to be revealing who's in that. That one you don't want to miss. Match number three. <sighs> Gentlemen, match number three hurts my heart. What? Because, I'll tell you, it's Brett Havoc versus Calvin Tankman. And I, I love both of these dudes. Bo both of these guys are my boys, and I love them. But one of these guys is going to go down. And, well, first, let, let's talk about the run of Calvin Tankman. Because Calvin Tankman has bowled through everybody he has come up against. Even if Calvin Tankman has not gotten the victory... His opponents have been damaged to the point where they will remember when they ran into indestructible Calvin Tankman. And, Chris, you gotta figure, man. And I'm not saying you're the guy who makes the matches, but considering that you're the guy who makes the matches, if Calvin Tankman is able to win this match, that's gotta favor heavily in his Emerge Championship opportunities. Well, I'm not gonna say... A title opportunity depends on this match, but I will say, should Calvin Tankman be victorious, it certainly won't hurt it. Yeah, I mean, there's not much that you could do at this point to hurt his title chances. He's been running through people all over the country, and uh, Emerge is the place where he covets that title. He wants to be the man in Emerge more than anything. You know who else does, though? Brett Havoc, and that's where this gets really difficult. Because, you know, three months ago we sat here and said, you think something's off with Brett? A couple months ago we said, there might be something off with Brett. L last month we said, there's something off with Brett. Guys, I'm really worried about Brett. I mean, so, Fireworks and Fisticuffs 2... Brett Havoc versus Braden Lee. Winner gets the number 30 spot in red, white, and bruise. Loser gets number two. We all know this. Brett Havoc loses that match. Under somewhat dubious circumstances, he claims I haven't had a chance to check the footage, uh, mostly because I've been taking a heat gun to my equipment to make sure it's all dried out for the past week and a half. But he says his shoulder was up. It may have been. But like as we talked about before, man, it's it's the ref's discretion, right? And, and the refs call. I, when I interviewed you over there in our <laughs> interview room, right when you first got the commissionership uh, on an episode of the Lowdown, Chris, remember that? Remember that? I remember that show. That was a show. We you talked about the fact that you didn't want you know referees' decisions are final. You don't want to be meddling too right. much. And Brett Havoc is very, very angry, and I just worry that he's slipping, man. Because he yelled at us. I said, man, I'm, I'm sorry, there's nothing that I can do. And he started yelling at me and yeah. Lurch. And John said, well, change something. Like, what can we do? That's the thing. Well, you're not the only one he's been yelling at. So uh, you're, you're right. Something's up with Brett. What it is, I, I couldn't tell you. And it doesn't help that he is facing maybe his toughest task to date. I mean, Brett Havoc has been in Emerge since, like, the beginning, yeah. from, you know, his feud with Kenneth James to Lennox Norris, Trevor Court, and now we're here, and he's got Calvin Tankman in front of him. I don't know if he's ever ran into a wall quite like that, and if Brett Havoc is not able to win this match... He's been losing a lot. And ever ever since Trevor Court threatened his kid with a chair, he's not been right. And if he loses this match, we talk about it all the time, Lurch. If you can't win and emerge, we've got an inbox full of people. We've got so many people who are in red, white, and bruise that you've never seen before that you've been asking us to bring back. Ready to take that spot. And going up against a test like Calvin Tankman, I mean, this is going to be a test for beautiful Brett Havoc. No other way to put it. Calvin Tankman's motto is, by any means. And I think that's where Brett Havoc is at right now. 
But stylistically, I mean, shoot, Brent Havoc loves to fly, and he loves to hit hard. Calvin Tankman, for as big of a dude as he is, he loves to fly, but he certainly loves to hit hard, too. It's a very good style matchup for these two. They complement each other very, very well, and... I think this is going to be a matchup for the ages, and we're still only at the third match. We've got five more matches left, including three championship matches, but now we would like to start thanking our sponsors, and these are people who really make a merge happen. A show like this, it, it wouldn't happen without sponsors. Absolutely not, and if you're looking to get your swole on, you can talk to Columbus supplement store. What's going on guys? Columbus Supplement Store just opened up. Uh, I'm actually from Columbus and here I actually grew up and I went to Columbus and went to high school. We carry a wide variety of supplements and we sell everything at the lowest price and we're legally allowed to sell it at. If you guys just want to come in, try some free products, we also do have free samples. Hope to see you guys soon. Thank you, of course, to Columbus Supplement Store for your support. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have got on the line the interview that I know I've been waiting for this whole you time. I think waiting. both of you guys have as well. Emerge newcomer, but making waves very, very quickly in this company. Of course, we've got on the line Paragon, the one and only. How are you doing, brother? Well, first of all, you got to remind yourself, it is the P-A-R-A-G-O and the walking apocalypse. Paragon is here again. And I am vanglorious. Now, how are you doing? Since I, I had to do it right for you. It's no big deal. Yeah, I, I couldn't remember all of it, but I figured you would go through it if I missed it, honestly. So, <laughs> so uh, you have done a whole lot in Emerge in just a couple of months. You pick up a big victory, and then you went in at number five in Red, White, and Brews, and you lasted darn near 30 minutes, lasted yourself until the final 10. However, I feel like a lot of people still don't know exactly what Paragon is all about. What's Paragon all about? But what is Paragon all about? I mean, some would say that Paragon is Mr. Smooth as Ice, twice as nice, never had a bad day in his whole life, mouth like Ali, dangerous as Tyson. But if you allow the smooth taste to fool you, get lost in the sauce and for something as sweet as pain. But others would say Paragon was forged in fire. He was beaten into shape. He was submerged into ice until he was taken out as the most deadliest weapon in professional wrestling. So, I would say it depends on who you talk to. Captain America? I think so. I think, um, so, even I don't know if you know this yet, but uh, you've got a pretty tough task ahead of you at Emerge 47 Ironclad on August 3rd. You are going to be taking on the Warfare himself, former Emerge champion and the only Triple Crown winner in Emerge history, Jeremy Hadley. Well, the purple one loves to hear that. I mean, when Paragon first came to Emerge Wrestling, he said first and foremost, he wants to go to the top, he wants to face the best, and he wants championship gold. So how better to obtain that moniker and taking on a former champion himself, Jeremy Hadley. And I want to thank you, Chris Lowe, for the opportunity because Paragon wouldn't have been able to prove himself if you didn't give him the opportunity to do so. Oh, without question. And the, your, your performance in the Red, White, and Blue Bruise Battle Royal, uh, you've obviously earned this. Yeah, but Jeremy Hadley, I mean, we're talking about Jeremy Hadley here. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, Paragon's good and all, but... This is Jeremy Hadley. I mean, this is an emer a former Emerge champion, probably going to be a new cha a champion again. Well, first of all, love child of Jay and Silent Bob. I know you have your opinions of things, but uh, Paragon is a bad man. He's a dangerous human being. And yeah, Paragon may have the gift of gab, 
but mama didn't raise no fool and daddy didn't raise no punk. I'm a bad man in that ring. I'm dangerous. And as bad of a man as Jeremy Hadley is, he wouldn't have held that championship if he wasn't a bad man himself. There's a million of him and there's only one paragon. I plan on going to that top. I plan on reaching Zion and I will get there by the first rung on that ladder being Jeremy Hadley. Now I know you might be waiting to hear the time play in the background and get your noise, noise, noise on, but uh, that's not what this is about right now. This is about me taking on the warfare Jeremy Hadley. Let's see what warfare is to a walk in the pocket. I mean, the tickets are only $10. They're not even 15 bucks, man. You know what? You say the tickets are only $10, when that just means that the crowd gets to experience a great showcase of what happens when Warfare meets the Fresh Prince of Magnificence and he gets to bask in my purple rain. Anything else that you want the people to know before we let you go, Mr. Paragon? I want the people to know this. When Paragon made his debut, you showered him with love and affection. When Paragon returned at Red, Right, and Bruise, you sang his name, the sweetest song that he has ever heard. Paragon is here for you. You ask Paragon to be here and Paragon will remain. He will stay the same and it ain't gonna ever change. Except for maybe championship gold around his waist. But other than that, I wanna thank the fans of Emerge. I wanna thank Chris Lowe. I wanna thank every single person that has been with me on this journey because Paragon hasn't been doing this for a long while. But I'm not here for a long time. I'm here for a good time. So I want to thank you for all that. I want to thank y'all for having me on the show. And Jeremy Hadley, I want you to get ready. I want you to take those beady, squint little eyes of yours that I don't trust. I want you to start training. I want you to look yourself in the mirror. And I want you to remind yourself, on August 3rd, you're not stepping in the ring with Gregory Iron. You ain't stepping in the ring with J.D. Mariana. You ain't stepping in the ring with anybody. But the walking apocalypse himself, Paragon. Paragon, of course, as always, we thank you for your time. Let's take a second before we break down this match even further to hear from the people who make this very show possible, Marco's Pizza. If you're in the mood for some great authentic Italian food at a fantastic price, try Marco's. Subs, wings, salads, and the best pizza around. Two locations in Columbus at 2019 25th Street and 3532 West Two Mile House Road. Along with daily hot deals, receive a free order of cheesy bread for signing up for Marco's E-Club. You can learn more at Marco's.com. Marco's, the official pizza of Emerge. It's really right. It's approved. Thank you, of course, to Marco's Pizza. We literally could not make this show happen without you. And seriously, like when, when you see the sponsors, when you see all of this, you, you see the commercials, what that translates to is these people are giving us money because they support our vision, they support Emerge, they support you and they want the support in return, right? It's, it's business. There's no reason we can't go support these people. Seriously, tell them Emerge sent you. They're going to be great about it every time. Some places, depending on uh, on how they're feeling that day, they may even you know give you a little discount because you came from Emerge. There's money at stake, people. Tell them that Emerge sent you, I promise. Match number four, we just revealed it to the man himself. Paragon, and he takes on a very angry Jeremy Hadley. Mm -hmm. Boys, I'm I'm not gonna if I can take off, you know, my my business hat for a second. Mm. And well, actually, I need this to talk. But my my point is, if I put on my fan hat for a second, this match excites me as a fan. Exactly, and that's why I made it. As a fan. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be such a hard-hitting match. Honestly, the I, I'm just waiting, uh, you know, as, as production head, I'm waiting for these videos <laughs> to start rolling in because I got a feeling these two are about to get in a war of words uh, for the century. 
but they're going to get into a war of fists in the ring as well. I think that's going to be just as good. Paragon, of course, trained by Truth Martini. Smooth talker, but just as smooth of a performer in the ring. But, you know, the, the thing that amazes me, Lurch, about Paragon is he, he exemplifies the whole no-wasted-motion thing. Everything he does in that ring... And you you, uh, you saw his brain firsthand, Jan Silent Bob. You, mm. you know he's always thinking. But he's no Jeremy Headley. He's no former Emerge champion, is he? And in fairness, nobody in Emerge really is Jeremy Hadley. He's the first Triple Count winner ever in Emerge. But, you know, Jeremy Hadley has lost by pinfall twice now to Gregory Iron, your current Emerge champion. And that's got to do something to a man's psyche. Oh, I mean, I, I happen to just... You know, casually walked past Jeremy Hadley talking to his uh, personal assistants after that. He was not a happy camper at all. And they couldn't have been either, considering they both got thrown over the top rope in Red, White, and Bruce. Didn't go well for them either. But, you know, they were distracted. Their, their, the, the, their employer had, had just lost another match when he thought he had gotten away with one. And, you know, Chris, I think... The, the conclusion of that match, you know, he hits him with the knucks, right. tries to hide him. Gregory's foot ends up under the, the, the ropes. And the easiest way to explain that, if you don't know the ins and outs of wrestling per se, it's out of bounds. Right. Right. If, if somebody is out of the ring, which is under those ropes, you can't pin them, you can't submit them. That's why getting the rope break, getting to the rope is so important. And... Our official noticed that. He restarted the match. Greg hit handicapped parking on Jeremy Hadley. And he ended up retaining his championship. That's one of the reasons, you know, you kind of got to trust the discretion of the refs because they do get it wrong every once in a while. They're human, but they right. get it right and they rectify the situation more times than they get it wrong. Without question. And, and that's why we let the refs make the final call. But... Jeremy Hadley, for just one second, for about a minute and a half, he had his Emerge Championship back. I was shocked. The crowd was shocked. Gregory Iron was unconscious because he just got hit in the face with brass knucks. But... And that should have been the end of it. He should have walked to the back. He should be our Emerge Champion. I don't care about Gregory Iron, whatever, Hero. I don't care. This is Jeremy Hadley we're talking about here. And, and now, I mean... <laughs> but we get into this situation, Jeremy Hadley, hungry. Because as much as Jeremy Hadley likes to, you know, run his mouth and portray himself as so much holier than thou, he understands he lost twice. Back of the line. He's got to work his way back up. He understands that. I know he understands that because he uh, showed that whole diatribe to Chris Caliber earlier this year. Right. And now we've got Paragon who's trying to make his name in this business right now and trying to do it by becoming a face of Emerge. Jeremy Hadley, the former face, Paragon perhaps the future face, and their roads are coming to a head right at Emerge 47 Ironclad. That creates a match that I think all of us want to see. And Jeremy Hadley will become victorious. Either way, one, one man's got to shut the other one up, and that's a tall order. <laughs> that's a tall order are. from either side, for sure. Match number five. Chris... I'll let you explain this one. I'll let you take the reins on this one because I know this has been a very personal and really strenuous process for you behind the scenes. Right. <laughs> and so I, I just want you to kind of explain what's happening. Uh, we'll just start off by saying Daniel Eads is not the easiest person in the world to work with. As um, we have all learned. Uh, that said, uh, he... Wants competition, so we're going to give it to him with the Daniel Eads 
invitation. And as I understand it, he doesn't care who his opponent is. Matter of fact, he prefers if he doesn't know who his opponent is at this point because he just wants to prove how dominant he is. And, Lurch, you kind of got to agree with that sentiment. Everybody knows Daniel Leeds is really angry right now. He blatantly insulted the commissioner. He got suspended for a month, removed from a battle royale that, honestly, he could have won. I mean, it came down at the end to... Ricky Ruckus, who has dealt with some health issues and is dealing with them right now, and Jordan Cage, who had been at since number one, if that third man is Daniel Eads, I don't think it's, you know, a bridge too far to say, I think Daniel Eads might take that. Absolutely. I mean, this is the man of tomorrow, Daniel Eads. I mean, he, he is he is talent. I mean, he is everything. I mean, he is he's showing you his confidence right here by, by inviting anybody who wants to to step in the ring, and he will. Pin those shoulders down, one, two, three. And, Chris, I I do have to ask, because within the offices, uh, in the group chats, on on all of the secret pages, the the memo was sent out a few days ago, uh, and you can only phrase it so many ways, but the subtext was, Daniel Leeds wants fresh meat. (laughs) Yeah. Who wants to open the invitational? Have we... Who wants to step in the ring right now with, I mean, what is he, six foot seven, two And he's got a proud fist. Who wants to step in the ring with that angry? Someone who would want to make a name for themselves, I would imagine. <laughs> and we, I mean, I talked about it earlier. We do have a lot of young guys who got their first opportunity in that battle royale. Mm-hmm. That gentlemen, man, if you want to get your name into Emerge history forever, if you can be the guy who takes down Daniel Eads... <laughs> you might want to pick a better spot than that. <laughs> but if you can, nobody will ever forget your name. Chris Lowe's email is open. You guys know it. Answer the challenge, I guess. We shall see what happens. Nevertheless, Daniel Eads does not want to know who it is until the moment their music hits because he doesn't care. And that is confidence that you can't teach, you can't breed it, you can't manufacture it. Daniel Eads is angry, and I have a feeling he's about to become the proverbial runaway train. That is, if whoever answers this invitational isn't able to to stop the train before they even put any coal into the engine. Nevertheless, you know, guys, actually, I'm a little thirsty. Okay. After, I tell you what, after we're done with this stream, how about we hit up Powerhouse Brewing? Okay. I like that. Columbus Bar in downtown is your home for daily $3.50 powerhouse beers and great food. Located at 322 4th Street, the CB is one of Indiana's oldest continually operating restaurants and bars and Columbus, Indiana's first brewery since the Civil War. Powerhouse Brewing Company champions its friendly service and great prices. Call 812-375-8800. Check them out online at thecb.powerhousebrewingco.com. Com. And finally, to close out our show, to close out this already amazing event, we've got three title matches. Three of Emerge's championships are going to be on the line, and all three of these should be barn burners. Let's start with our tag team championships. High Caliber gets one more shot. Versus custom made, and this time, anything goes. No disqualification. No disqualification whatsoever, which also, of course, means no count out, which means this one could end up anywhere. You can hit them with anything. You can put them through anything. And I've got to say, custom made, when custom made goes around... Throwing fireballs at Chris Caliber. Trying to hit a referee 
with a fireball, missing, and then just super kicking him instead. When you're doing that, eventually somebody's going to want anything goes. And when the two people who want anything goes are Chris Caliber and Donnie Idol, with, with a heavy tinge even on the right side toward Chris Caliber, you might be in trouble. I mean, <laughs> yeah, they're in trouble. We've seen high caliber. Of course, Donnie has won two of emerges for ladder matches. Chris Caliber has won several no disqualification matches. I mean, from defeating Jacob Johns, Zodiac in that casket match, way back with Kenneth James. In a no disqualification match at Emerge 19. These two guys can get really violent. But that being said, custom made, they've got that old Southern style. They come from the Memphis playbook. And they got no problem getting down and dirty either. Oh, and Mortimer was talking to me about this. By the way, Mortimer, make sure you update that manager license. You don't need any sort of reason why you get excluded from the ring. I mean, and it's like they it's like high caliber played into custom mates, you know, plans. I mean, they got Chris Caliber to ask for a no disqualification match. I mean that is that that's beautiful. Here's the question. Because we all know Morty's inheritance is worth millions and millions of dollars here's my question what kind of weapons can mortimer blankenship's money buy whatever he wants i mean he's already got That's the best what drivers scares me yeah wait you need a driver and putt putt it's, it's don't it's, it's miniature golf anyway right? miniature golf what will custom made bring but then on the other side high caliber right Donnie Idol, Chris Caliber, they know how to get thrifty. They can find weapons anywhere. What can they bring? <laughs> Again, whatever they can find. And not only that, both teams are really angry at each other. <laughs> like, they're really angry at each other. They don't like each other. The question is going to be, how much of a factor... Is a Mortimer Blankenship going to be on the outside? And, hey, did you ever figure out who she was? Who? The, oh, the, oh. the other... Uh, I did get a little bit of information about her from Mortimer, and you will find out more if you're paying attention. Okay, because she just kind of showed up at ringside. I noticed that, too. And I got no idea who she is or where she came from. I was just told you the source associated with Morty. So. Yes, she is. Well, she she must be so upstanding then. <laughs> My, <laughs> yes, she is. Um. Nevertheless, I don't think there's really too much awful more to say about this one, folks. It's it's been brewing since darn near the start of the year. It's going to be violent. There is going to be broken bodies strewn about Parkside Elementary. And no more rematches. When Custom Made gets those belts, I mean, they, they shouldn't have to face High Caliber anyway. I mean, if this they may defeat very them, well be yes. High Caliber's final opportunity. If they defeat them in a no disqualification match, there's nothing they can say. Nothing. Thank you. But, folks, this one is going to be a treat. This one, I firmly believe, for all the matches we've announced so far, is going to be worth the price of admission alone. And that is something that scares and excites me. Yes, for your Emerge Outbreak Championship, Cole Radrick defends against Braden Lee. Oh, my goodness. Back-to-back, -back, two matches that can straight-up sell tickets. I, Braden Lee... Cole Radrick. It has happened one time before in Emerge in the first round of the Outbreak 8 tournament in March of this year. And Braden Lee surprised Cole Radrick, shocked him with a roll-up, and then went on to become the number one contender, albeit through interesting means, to the Outbreak Championship. 
How ironic that Cole Radrick ends up being the one with the belt months later that Braden Lee is now chasing. But, but, Chris, even you've got to admit, Braden, for as whiny as he can be, for the fact that during Braden Lee versus Brett Havoc, I had to step away from commentary because Braden Lee filed an emergency in- injunction <laughs> oh. against you. Right. During his match, somehow, I don't know how he managed that. But for all of that, he does have a point. His promise number one, uh, one-on-one championship match turned into a triple threat with Calvin Tankman. Yep. Mm-hmm. Then he bargained his way into also not a one-on-one match, which was the latter match for the Outbreak Championship at Emerge 44, Fly High. This is it, dude. Like, this is your number one contendership match truly manifested months later. This is your one-on-one shot, my man. you got to make the most of it. And I am ready for this. And frankly, I understand why. It's not like you're just giving him this. He did earn it. He, did. he beat Brett Havoc and then went in at number 30 and almost bested 29 other men. If it hadn't been for Justin Kyle, again, it's kind of like we were talking with Daniel Eads earlier. A worn-down Jordan Cage, a worn-down Ricky Ruckus. Who wins there? Maybe it's Braden Lee. Maybe if it's Justin Kyle who's left standing, it's Justin Kyle. But nevertheless, Braden Lee could have taken that as much as anybody. He could very well be your number one contender for the Emerge Championship right now. Outbreak Championship, which is the one that he's wanted, mm-hmm. it's a really good opportunity. Yes, and and let's not forget to mention two-time All-American, uh, he Outbreak Eight champion. I mean, Braden Lee is is the star. The the I mean, this is the biggest name we have right now, Braden Lee, and going up against Cole Rag- Cole Radrick in that Outbreak Championship match. Cole Radrick, fresh off a win over Chase Holiday. Uh, who, I, I mean, elephant in the room, was not the original scheduled opponent of Cole Radrick at Fireworks and Fisticuffs um, due to some very unfortunate, unforeseen circumstances. Trevor Court was not able to be at, at this particular event. Uh, but Chase Holiday, a guy who was trained by, oh, I don't know, Seth Rollins, gets the win against Chase Holiday. Certainly no slouch, and a guy who he's been done, uh, you know up and down the roads right. with for so long. Cole Radrick is flying high right now. No pun intended, considering the the event at which he won his outbreak championship. But when he gets rolling, when anybody gets rolling, but especially when Cole gets rolling, man, it's really difficult to take momentum like that and stop it. Yeah, but he eats carbs. That Brayden Lee's been carb free since '03. Well, yes, Cole Radrick loves Taco Bell and Chicken Fingers. I think everybody who knows him knows this. But he also has something that Braden Lee does not have currently, and that's a championship. That being said, Braden Lee apparently does have telekinetic powers, considering he, if if you are going to believe him, put Cole Radrick through a table without even having to jump through him. But I, I I think that was more just because the table was damaged when Cole Radrick was thrown onto it in the first place. But he'll was, tell you he has telekinetic powers. It was an intimidation. I mean, just the fact that Braden Lee was on the way the table knew better. That's that's how Braden Lee I mean, that's just how amazing Braden Lee is. Some do you like do you hear the things that you say? Are you talking? Emerge Outbreak Championship, Cole Radrick versus Braden Lee. These two guys are both guys who are determined to prove themselves. And, you know, you would think as a champion, Cole Radrick doesn't have much to prove. But he, the, the reason that he's been so successful is that he stays having a chip on his shoulder. He feels like he's got something to prove to everybody in the locker room, everybody in the crowd who says he's not ready. And Braden Lee 
is looking to spoil that and prove that he really is the outbreak star in Emerge. And shoot, imagine if Braden Lee wins this match and then way back in match number two, Jake Carter wins that match. Next month, we have Braden Lee versus Jake Carter, two people who trained together Mm -hmm. at the same school at the same time. So many cool little things moving into September. But before we get to that, folks, we've got a main event to get through. And that main event is brought to you by our friends at Greenlight Auto. A quality used vehicle is just a short trip away. Greenlight Auto at 770 Jonesville Road in Columbus. Greenlight Auto is locally owned and operated, a Carfax certified dealer, and a member of the Better Business Bureau. All Greenlight Auto vehicles are inspected with service contracts and gap insurance available. Greenlight Auto also offers professional tinting on any vehicle, whether you buy it from us or not. And if you refer a friend who purchases a vehicle, you get $100. Check out Greenlight Auto's inventory online at greenlightapproval.com. Your main event for the Emerge Heavyweight Championship, the handicapped hero Gregory Iron takes on Picture Perfect, the winner of Red, White, and Bruise, albeit under dubious circumstances. You can't argue with the fact that he went in at number one and he ran the gauntlet. He won the thing. Jordan Cage. And what a fairy tale fairy tale story that was. Last year we saw the same thing. He went in at number one. Okay, yeah, he didn't win he didn't win the battle royal there. So it but, was not the same thing. But but he he came back. He came he asked for the number one spot like a true winner would. He started in number one. He went through twenty nine other competitors and this is the moment we've all been waiting for. Going for that emerge championship picture perfect Jordan Cage. I mean this is it is picture perfect. And, you know, Chris, you and I talk about it even o- over lunch sometimes. Like, I can't stand the person, picture perfect, Jordan Cage. I don't, I don't agree with his methods. He's not a nice guy to be around. I don't know why he dyed his hair all of a sudden. But he is one of the best competitors that Emerge has ever seen. Period. I I mean, you look throughout Emerge, I don't know of too awful many people offhand. And when when we talk about those people, we start talking about the J.D. Marianis and the Chris Calibers and the Zodiacs who can turn in such a smooth, consistent performance every month. I, I don't like his methods, but he can win this. Oh, without question. Without question. The fact that he wanted to be the number one entrant in the Red, White, and Bruise Battle Royal, the fact that, you know, ending aside, he lasted the full, the full uh, amount of the match, he could very well win this. And, and aside from the fact that he spent most of the match outside the ring, it, Jordan Cage... You know, two-time Emerge Tag Team Champion with Pretty Perfect. I mean, you're looking at a man who... And again, we talked about that old Memphis style with Custom Made and with anybody who Morty is paired with. It's a match made in heaven. And if Gregory Iron isn't ready, this, this could be potentially very, very difficult for Greg. I mean, there's no way Gregory Iron could be prepared for a test like Picture Perfect Jordan Cage at this point. I mean, sure, Gregory Iron, he came in, he won the Emerge Championship, he, he made it through Headley, yeah, that, that was a fluke, you know, maybe he went through it twice, whatever, but now he's going to up against Picture Perfect Jordan Cage here. I mean, he, he, he can't get through that. But it's like we've been talking about for months, A-Dub. Gregory Iron has been told him he's not going to be able to do it his entire life. He's been fighting his entire life, and he's been doing it with a bum wheel the entire time. Gregory Iron, I think I, I thought there was no way he was going up and he was going to be able to beat JD and Jeremy. I thought a focused Jeremy, there was no way he was going to be able to overcome. But that's his shtick, if you will. He overcomes every single time. 
And that's something that you just can't fight. No. I mean, you you, you can train, you can prepare, but you can't be ready for somebody who is always on. You know what I mean? Yeah. And somebody who's always ready to fight himself out of any corner that he gets backed into. But, man, Jordan Cage, um, this guy, as much as I don't like him personally, and for some reason he keeps messing with me, he's one of the best. August 3rd, he gets the opportunity to prove that he is the best. And it will be a picture-perfect story, fairy tale ending. Emerge 47, Ironclad, ladies and gentlemen, that is your card. I know some of you guys like to join us a little bit later, so I want to run you through all eight matches and our special segment, of course. Of course, August 3rd. The doors open at 6. We've got a Facebook uh, live match at 640. The show, the event, officially starts at Seven, of course, that's at Parkside Elementary right here in Columbus, Indiana, August 3rd. Saints Row with Justin Kyle. Listen as the beast speaks, am I right? Zodiac versus Yukon Mike. TJ Kemp versus Jake Carter versus Flash Thompson for the number one contendership for the Emerge Outbreak Championship. Brett Havoc takes on Calvin Tankman. Paragon takes on Jeremy Hadley. Daniel Eads invites a whole mess of people. Choose one, send him my way. The Daniel Eads Invitational takes place. High caliber, custom made, no disqualification. Cole Radrick, Braden Lee, Outbreak Championship. And in your main event, picture perfect Jordan Cage tries to add another frame to his wall in which goes the Emerge Championship when he takes on Gregory Iron. Ladies and gentlemen, you would have to be a fool not to miss this. I mean, seriously, $10 for a ticket, 4 for 30 There's no reason not to be there. August 3rd, what else are you doing August 3rd? Get ready to send the kids back to school? Tell you what, before you send the kids back to school, treat them to one last, one last hurrah. You know, one last awesome night before we go back to school. Emerge Wrestling. We're in a school, so it's kind of the same Mm -hmm. thing. You can learn things at Emerge. Lurch hasn't, but you can. Please. Ladies and gentlemen. Let me school you all. That is your card. Emerge 47, Ironclad. We can't wait. Be watching the Facebook, the Twitter, the Instagram, all of the promotional material. We're going to get interviews with Emerge Stars. We're going to get videos sent in. We're going to get breakdowns over on Instagram by John Gates. Can't wait for all of that. Can't wait for August 3rd. Guys, we will see you there.